Here we are at Barton Springs. Barton Springs is one of the most popular swimming spots in Austin today. This is one of the largest springs in the state. The spring itself has probably been here for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. It was a source of drinking water, source of food. Barton Springs discharges from the Edwards Aquifer. Barton Springs is uh, basically the bottom of a funnel that's probably somewhere around 350 square miles. Austin only has jurisdiction over about a third of the area that contributes to Barton Springs. The rest of it being in Travis County, Hayes County, Dripping Springs, and some other communities. We're in Goat Cave today. Goat Cave is one of many of the hundreds of caves in the Austin area. Looking around on the walls of this cave, you can see a lot of cave formations. These features are examples of how water enters the Edwards Aquifer for the most part. You have these large openings and they will capture surface drainage uh, gradually over years and years and years and that surface water then cascades into here recharging the aquifer. It's fascinating. What you can find in the ground, it's very unpredictable. You know you can start at a small crack on the surface and work your way through hundreds of feet of crawl and then suddenly come to a, a pit that's a hundred foot deep. You feel like you're at the edge of the earth where the wind is just blowing your hair up and you can hear water maybe passing through a passageway where you're now at the water table 200 feet below the ground. There's a whole world down there that is completely unexplored. This is Onion Creek. Right now it's dry and it doesn't look very outstanding, but this creek is actually the largest source of water to Barton Springs. It produces about 40% of the water to Barton Springs. So this we're looking at here is a sinkhole. Sinkholes often take thousands of years to form from dissolution, but there are little openings where the water can get in from this creek and make their way down into the aquifer. The water in, in Onion Creek comes from rural areas, so it's very pristine, and this is why we like to encourage water from Onion Creek going into the aquifer. The water is such high quality. And so normally this water would go downstream on Onion Creek, may even cause flooding problems downstream. But if we can restore the creek to allow more of it to go underground, they can supply people who have wells on the aquifer who are relying on the aquifer for their drinking water and for Barton Springs. So the water can come out, support things like the Barton Springs salamander and people that are swimming in Barton Springs pool. Um, so the water will sustain for much longer. The temperature of water that comes out of Barton Springs varies in a very small temperature range. It averages about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. There's aquatic species that have adapted to living in springs like Barton Springs, like Barton Springs salamander, that have adapted to having that very constant, stable uh, temperature environment to, uh, to evolve in. Uh, it's found nowhere else uh, in the world. So protecting Barton Springs means we have to protect the water that enters the aquifer that feeds Barton Springs, and so we have a very large area to try and protect the quality of water that enters the aquifer. So, if you want to know where the water goes in the aquifer, and I'm a hydrogeologist, we want to study that, there's only so far you can crawl into a cave to see where it goes before you reach a constriction that's too small for you to go through without having to dig it open. So one of the techniques we use is we use dyes, and non-toxic dyes that are safe for drinking. We have a little packet of charcoal. The charcoal will swerve the dye, it'll suck onto it. You can detect it on the charcoal if it arrives there. What we found, to our surprise, we're 20 miles from Barton Springs now and it took only three days to go 20 miles to Barton Springs for the first arrival of that dye. And what that told us is that um, the aquifer doesn't filter very well. It filters about as well as the pipes in your house might filter water, but they transmit water tremendously. In urban areas, you have fertilizers people apply on their land, um, contaminants, people need gasoline to drive their cars. So you have all these sources of contaminants that can easily be transmitted through the aquifer with, with virtually no filtration whatsoever.
Well, we're sitting in a, a concrete box right in the center of Onion Creek. So the significance of this box over this cave entrance is it's a means to control flow of water into the aquifer. At times, all the debris that's flowing down Onion Creek would clog up the cave entrance. So any rocks or debris coming down the creek would clog it up and there'd be very little recharge. So there's contaminants associated with that storm debris that we wanted to keep out. So the function of this box is to open and close these valves because the storm water flows past, the contaminated water would go past, and within a few days the water quality clears up such that we would then open the valve and the better quality water would go into the cave, recharging the aquifer. So this is just one of the measures that the district has been taking to improve water quality and water quantity in the aquifer. The Barton Springs Conservation District is a, is a groundwater district that, that manages the water resources of the Barton Springs segment of the Edwards Aquifer. And this well field in particular is one of the larger well fields, so these wells are capable of pumping with these turbine pumps uh, upwards of a thousand gallons a minute. And so this is the sole source of water for about 60,000 people in the Barton Springs uh, aquifer area. And so one of our uh, missions is to manage that resource during drought conditions. From our studies, we know that there's nearly a one-to-one -one relationship. What you withdraw from a well is what doesn't come out at Barton Springs. And so we know that during times of drought, when there's only 13 cubic feet per second coming out in a drought, that if these pumps are running 24 hours, seven days a week because people aren't conserving, then we run the risk of drying up Barton Springs. So the balancing act is, is, is to try and use the resource without producing too much harm to the environment. So all the efforts that the city and other groups have gone in to conserve the aquifer, to conserve the quality of the water by keeping development off of the recharge zones, by conserving land, by helping reduce pumping. This is the fruit of all those labors. This is what it all comes back down to, is, is this place, this very unique place, not only for Austin, but for all of Central Texas. Barton Springs, it's a great place, young and old alike. Come and join us.